So in today's video, you're going to find me in two of my happy places, quite different from each other, ironically. The first one is in Maine, and the second one is in my soap kitchen downstairs. Let's start with the first one. This past fall, my sister Marlene, her husband Mark, John and I went hiking in Maine. We ended up hiking Mount Katahdin, and if you're not familiar with that, that is the highest point in the state of Maine. Um, it's just over 5,200 feet. It is a pretty strenuous hike. In fact, you have to sign in or register to even go on it. Uh, they want to keep track of how many people are up there. And if you're at all familiar with the Appalachian Trail, that is the ending point of the Appalachian Trail. You know, it starts down in Georgia, goes all the way up to Maine, to Mount Katahdin. And one of our highlights was we actually got to meet some through hikers that had started off in March or April, I think. And in September is when we did the hike, is when they actually reached the end. And it was so much fun to see them celebrate, you know, reaching the end of the Appalachian Trail. Uh, just really neat. So you may be wondering what ties this Mount Katahdin hike and soap together. Well, sometimes when I'm out in nature, which is again one of my favorite places to be, I begin eyeing things and colors and sometimes I'll see a bar of soap in certain colors like I'm inspired by maybe in this case nature and I want to go home and make soap that kind of looks like that and even maybe not smells like it but kind of has that feel as in like a natural soap in this case. Uh, so that's what I did on this hike. I started taking pictures of different things that I thought, I wonder if I could turn this whole feeling look into a bar of soap. I know it sounds a bit crazy. In fact, some of my family members kind of laughed when I told them this, but I really can't help it. Like I just get inspired by things like that. So that's really what this video is about. I want to take you down to my soap kitchen. So let's see some of the things I saw on this hike that made me think of making a bar of soap that color. I fell in love with the color and the texture of this reindeer moss or reindeer lichen it's called. And the reason it's called that is it's food for you know reindeer, moose, caribou, um, just such a pretty color. So I wanted the soap making part of this video to be really relaxing where I don't talk a lot. But I will mention some of the ingredients I'm using to make this 100% natural soap in case you want to use it. I was really impressed to find natural ingredients that I could use to color my soap with versus using mica powders. Not that there's anything wrong with mica powders, but for this soap I just wanted it to be 100% natural from the earth. I won't show you the process of how I make soap. I actually have another video on that. It's called The Basics of Soap Making. Um, here I'm using the same recipe I used in that video, but just adding some different ingredients, including these natural colorants. For the reindeer moss, I'm going with a French green clay, and this is found in France, and it's composed of iron oxides and seaweed, along with some other decomposed plant matter that contribute to its green color. Um, just such a pretty color. When I mixed it with the oil, it turned out you know, darker than the powder looked. But by the time I put it in my soap batter, it actually turned out to be just the right color, I thought. I'm using two different kinds of essential oil for this reindeer moss soap. Uh, one is clary sage and the other is lime. They smell wonderful together. And just keeping things really natural, I even went as far as making my own wooden molds for this soap. Plus, I wanted the bars to be just a bit longer than what my normal molds would create. Lined them with freezer paper.
I don't do this for all of my soap, but for this natural soap, I use my radiators in the basement to heat the soap. I set it on here for three hours. Um, as it sets, it will have a gel phase going all through the soap, just making it nice and dark and kind of evenly colored. The next soap is matching the beautiful boulders that we had to climb over, uh, different shades of gray. First soap I'm making, I use charcoal to color it which is really good for your skin. And the second one I actually didn't get a video of, but I used indigo powder to get that lighter shade of gray. The essential oils for the charcoal one are tea tree and spearmint. And then for the indigo powder, the lighter shade of gray, I used lemon and lavender essential oils. Both smell divine. I want to try and replicate some of the pretty tones of pink or rose that we saw in Maine. And of course this was in September, so some of the leaves had started to change. Here I'm using rose clay powder to do this. It's known to be really good for your skin. Um, it can draw out toxins and reduce skin irritation. A lot of facial masks are made using this. I chose to go with cypress and orange essential oils for this soap. Right now we have a bar of this in the shower and John loves it. He says it's one of his favorites. Um, it's a really kind of woodsy, earthy smell with a little bit of citrus. The last soap I'm making here is just trying to replicate all of the pretty tones of green that we saw in Maine. You guys know how I love the color of green, but everything from the trees to some of the underbrush, uh, ferns, just so beautiful. I chose to go with pine and eucalyptus essential oils for this soap. Uh, very fitting to the color, of course, and just smells really fresh and clean. The natural colorant for this soap is going to be chlorella powder, and it is an algae. Um, I did some research on it, and it looks like people actually drink it, like you mix it with water or smoothies. 
um, take it internally, but it can also be used as a colorant for bath products. Now it's time to label the soap, one of my favorite steps. I wanted something really natural looking, so I opted to go with this gift wrap that looks like craft paper. It's just a bit thinner than your craft paper. Um, it's easy to tear. Um, I tore it into sections and kind of wrapped it around the soap and have a little sticker with the name of the soap to hold it in place. And I have these pretty botanical stamps that I'm gonna use. I'm just giving it, again, that earthy, natural look and then finish it off with a piece of jute cord. So doesn't this just remind you of nature? I could not be happier with how this soap turned out. Like I often say, I wish I could get the smell of it to you. I love how everything is completely natural in here. Like you could almost eat it, although don't eat it. So as I was experimenting with the different scents that I wanna use for this line of soap, I of course have some that I decided not to go with. And one of them is Star Anise. I don't know, are you guys familiar with that scent or not, but it's the fancy word for black licorice. For myself, I love black licorice, like I like to eat it. And it seems a little bit weird maybe to smell it in soap, but I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I asked some of my family members, you know, got their opinions, and most of them didn't really like that because they don't like black licorice. So make sure if you decide to order Star Anna's soap that you like black licorice because it smells exactly like that. And some of the other scents you're gonna see under that listing that aren't included in the five I showed you in this video aren't necessarily terrible smelling that I didn't decide to you know, go with them. Uh, one of them is the Jasmine. I did not realize how expensive that oil is. I was kind of oblivious when I added it to my cart when I placed my order. And I think I ended up paying over $30 for two ounces. Um, did not realize that. I'm sure many of you probably know that, but it smells divine. Like, in fact, I'd love to use it in soap. So for now, even though I love it, I probably won't go with that scent. Um, I would definitely have to adjust my pricing if I were to do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it wasn't like my normal videos are, but you guys have heard me say this before. I love to make soap, so every now and then you're probably gonna see a soap video on here. I think this soap would make a great gift idea or if you just wanna have it displayed in your bathroom for a while before you use it, I think that would be pretty too. So make sure to head on over to the shop, check it out if you're at all interested. I, of course, just have a limited amount. As always, I hope your day is going great. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.